Hello and welcome to stage 5 of this year's World Championship in Through the Ages. We are now down to 112 players and if we consider that we had quite about over a thousand at the start of the tournament, we are now down to the top 10% basically of the players. Not that many players are left and also not that many upper bracket groups are left. If we can take a look at the groups, you can see that there are only four upper bracket groups because there are only 16 players who managed to win all of their groups so far in the stages before and against three of them I will be playing in the stage in uh, upper bracket group. The good thing is, even if I should finish last in this stage, I will still uh, would still move on to the lower bracket of the next stage. So there is um, not a risk of elimination, but of course there is the chance to win the group again and then again be in the upper bracket of the next stage and then again have maybe the chance uh, to not finish first and still continue in the tournament. So ideally, of course, I would like to win my group. And now without further ado, we are going to going to take a look at my opponents. And in this stage those will be E558 2768, and Caesar Salah. Those are the three opponents um, of me in this stage and I will introduce them shortly to you. I don't know a lot about them but I will mostly tell you about their performance in the stages before in the tournament. And E5 um, no, I will call him like that from now on, has um, started playing in stage 2, had didn't have to play the qualification stage and started with uh, winning the group with 29 points. Then again in stage 3 managed to win the uh, stage again uh, the group with again 29 points and then in the stage before where the upper bracket groups also already were quite tough he managed to win the group with 33 points so quite a strong performance by him so far in the tournament and uh, yeah, um, apart from that I don't really know, know that much about him so uh, yeah, but definitely has shown some strong performances so far. Then we have Dreitze who has uh, finished with 27 points in stage 2, 24 points um, in stage 3 and then in stage 4 I think it was 23 points where he managed to uh, finish before Todd Silence who is a very strong player. So uh, no, he also managed of course to win every group so far, not with that many points but uh, no, has finished before Todd Silence so definitely a strong performance and he also has already won uh, quite a big tournament because he was the winner of the first uh, Australian Open tournament and there he has already shown that he can you know, play at the top level and uh, win a tournament at the end. And in international Intermezzo Championship I think he is mostly playing around gold level. Um, maybe also sometimes in platinum or silver but no. Then Cesar Sala has in stage 2 finished his group with 29 points, then in stage 3 with 27 points, in stage 4 with 29 points again. So definitely also quite a strong performance by him so far. He is playing mostly I think in platinum or gold level in the National Intermezzo Championship, I think more in platinum than in gold. And uh, no, so definitely a very solid player and now we will also take a quick look at their clicker rating to, so to maybe give you a bit more of an idea of their strength. And in the rating I am at the moment still on the top and the first opponent, opponent of my group in the rating is uh, Caesar Sala and he is here on the th uh, 63rd position in the rating. Then we have um, E5 who is in the 82nd uh, uh, position in the rating but uh, for him it's very interesting when we take a look at his um, estimated click rating which is quite high. It's quite a bit higher than most of the players around him. It's also quite a bit higher than Caesar Salas and when we take a look with um, 1915 he definitely uh, is at the level of uh, no, some top 20 players. So uh, no, he maybe didn't play that many rated games yet but if he uh, continues to play in the fashion uh, of which he played his rated games before, then he uh, might actually move quite a bit up in the ratings. So uh, no, that uh, is definitely something very interesting to note. So he also no, climbed a lot of places already uh, in the last update and uh, no, so he might be still a bit, um, well, he might uh, no, be quite a bit underrated with his uh, conservative rating at the moment. And then the last opponent is uh, Dreitze 
who is in the 161st position in the rating. So those are my three opponents. I maybe got a little bit um, uh, lucky with the seeding in the stage because uh, there would have been, for example, also players like SD4 and KK, Pascalotopia, PV4, also Varshinets, um All of them I also could have um, potentially gotten as an opponent um, in the stage. Uh, yeah, but the opponents that are in my group have managed to win all of the groups before, so it definitely would be very stupid to underestimate them. And especially E5, who I just don't have that much knowledge about, uh, yeah, could could potentially be quite a strong opponent if he uh, yeah, lives up to his strong rating that he has in uh, as his estimated rating. Alright, but now without further ado, we are going to take a look at the first game, and it will be a four-player game, so all of the players of the group are, group are involved. And in this first four-player game, I'm playing in the first position, and we can also take a look at the Leaders and Wonders. And we can see that there is some lab synergy in H3 with Bill Gates, Steve Jobs and Marie Curie. There's also the Manhattan Project and Spaceflight. So definitely some synergy uh, for you know, some big science production. There's also Pierre and Mandela in the game. Gandhi is there as well. There is also Chaplin in the Hollywood. And the Red Cross is there as well. In H2 we have uh, also some nice science leaders with Newton and Nobel. We have Shakespeare as a big culture leader. Maria Theresa is there together with the Ocean Liner Service. There's also James Watt and the Railroad. And we have two military action leaders with Napoleon and Catherine. There's also Harvard College as an H2 wonder, so definitely some interesting H2 wonders in the game. In H1 we have one military action leader with Jan Shishka, Nostradamus can help with the strength, Barbarossa as well, um, Saladin is there, so very strong leader, Columbus and uh, Gutenberg as well, also Leonardo. Then uh, Machu Picchu is there in uh, as a wonder from H1, there are both of the Happy Face Lucian wonders with Forbidden City in St. Peter's Basilica, there's the Silk Road but no Universitas and also the Taj Mahal. And also important to note of course that in H2 there is no Swiss Canal in this game. I'm in first position and I think here it's mostly a decision between either going for Stonehenge or for Hammurabi. Hammurabi is of course quite strong, I would have him in the first position, so I don't... There is Caesar, but there would be not the danger that I'm playing behind Caesar with Hammurabi, which I think is even more dangerous. But the thing is, if I take Hammurabi, I think it's very, very likely that both the Stonehenge and the Pyramids are taken away. The Hanging Gardens then maybe would stay on two civil actions, but even if those are on one civil actions, uh, it's maybe not the greatest wonder to get. And the other wonders that could come out of the deck are Colossus and Colosseum. Both of them I don't like too much. The Colosseum can, of course, maybe be fine with Hammurabi, also in a four-player game, but I just... I'm just not the biggest fan of this wonder, and also um, those wonders and also the hanging gardens might not be available for one civil action, so either I have to take a wonder and a wonder that I don't even like that much for two civil actions, or I have to use Samurabi to take a 2 HA yellow cards at the next turn, and then no, I just didn't like that as much, and if I take the Stonehenge now, there is quite a good chance um, that I maybe also get a very solid leader at my next turn, because the pyramids will very likely be taken uh, by one of my opponents, and if this is the case, then it's almost guaranteed that I either get Cleopatra or Aristotle at my next turn for one civil action, and both of them I would be very happy to get, and the combination of one of those leaders with the Stonehenge, I think at the end I just like more than going for Hammurabi and then either Hanging Gardens or one of those two wonders. Then Caesar Sala will just go for the pyramids, so also goes for the wonder first, that leaves Dreitz uh, with the option to go for Hammurabi and two rich lands. So definitely not a bad start for him. And then E5 will go for Cleopatra, and Urban Growth doesn't know yet what wonder he will be getting, but uh, no, there are still some to be revealed, and then he should have a decent shot at getting one at his next turn. Now it's my turn, and there are two leaders available for me for one civil action, uh, Aristotle and Alex. There could be Saladin, for example, and Nostradamus as an early replacement for Alex, so uh, that's definitely something to take a look at when evaluating if you want to go for a leader like Alex or Hippocrates. So it could be an idea to go for Alex, but I think I just like Aristotle more, getting even more additional science. I think he can potentially work quite nicely with the Stonehenge, especially if uh, I should get a copy of Monarchy or Code of Laws. Then I have some additional civil actions, and uh, with the additional science from the Stonehenge, I can even uh, yeah, maybe develop a lot of technologies that I take with Aristotle, hopefully giving me a big boost in the early game. 
And so even though the yellow token of Alex could maybe be quite nice to have, and maybe I could have a chance to get a decent leader as a replacement rel relatively quickly, I still just like it more to go for Aristotle. But then I also have to think about if I maybe want to grab this engineering genius A4 to civil actions, but I think it's relatively clear that I maybe shouldn't go for it. First of all, just taking it for no, just taking the engineering genius for two civil actions is not that great. At the end, it's basically like taking a card like Elden Growth A for one civil actions. It's two. Uh, civil actions for two resources, so it's not that great of a deal, it definitely can sometimes be worth it, but uh, I think mostly in cases where you maybe have a wonder that you really want to finish as quickly as possible, for example with the pyramids, uh, then maybe uh, the engineering genius camps becomes a bit more valuable, but I don't think I need to necessarily need to, need to rush the Stonehenge, and so I just think it's a lot better to elect Aristotle and increase my population, especially because, uh, also because, um, there are some cards that I maybe would be willing to spend quite a bit, uh, bit of civil actions for. For example, if there is indeed an early code of laws, or maybe an early monarchy, or maybe an early copy of iron, uh, then I think it could be a consideration at the next turn to, to just build a second lab and take one of those cards, maybe even for three civil actions, scoring, scoring the first science with Aristotle, and if I get something like monarchy and code of laws, then hopefully I, there's the chance that I get a nice boost to my position. And uh, no, if I now just take the engineering genius in hand and I just don't have the civil actions to elect Aristotle and then also build my lab, so uh, now with doing that, with electing Aristotle and with uh, increasing my population, I at the next turn have the option to just build my lab, take a card, and um, then maybe having a better shot at getting something like Code of Laws or Monarchy very early. I draw the foray and a blunder, then Caesar Sala goes for Alex, the engineering genius, builds a mine, definitely a solid start for him with having engineering genius in the pyramids. Then a trade civil go for Hammurabi, builds at a uh, third mine, still has a rich land in hand because he will manage to get two of them at the first turn and then he is willing to pay two civil actions for the Colosseum. It's definitely can be a nice combination with Hammurabi and he is now willing to pay two civil actions for it. There would have been also an early monarchy that he maybe could have even paid three civil actions for to go for a revolution. I think it could have been potentially interesting but um, no, there definitely also was the chance that he can't do the revolution without having corruption and then maybe he just rather went for the Colosseum at the end. And then e5 builds the second lab, elects Cleo. He also could have taken the monarchy. I, of course, was very interested to see if the monarchy will be available for me at my next turn. But e5 doesn't want to miss out on a wonder, wants to have a way to spend the additional resource from Cleopatra on. And with that, I will be able to take the monarchy at my next turn, which I was very happy about. And of course, I grab the monarchy immediately. There's also another interesting card, especially with the Stonehenge and with having Aristotle, and that's the masonry. I think definitely it has to be considered to just take the masonry here. Um, there are some interesting wonders. There is especially the Silk Road. Forbidden City could be nice, especially with the monarchy. Then later on, Ocean Liner Service and Railroad. So there are some wonders where the masonry works nicely. And uh, I think getting the masonry before having finished the Stonehenge can just be very, very nice. But in order to take it, I would need to skip building my second lab, which is maybe not too bad with having the additional science from Stonehenge and Aristotle. But on the other hand, the monarchy will be quite a bit of an investment. And also, if I take the masonry, it means that I don't get a breakthrough. I don't build my second lab. And um, then maybe after having gone for masonry and monarchy, I will be a little bit short on science, even with having Aristotle and the Stonehenge, to also maybe get something like iron going, a military tech or something. And maybe uh, with having the monarchy, ideally at some point, I also want to get a code of laws to not be stuck on five civil actions for too long. So um, at the end, I just thought I am not willing to pay two civil actions for the masonry here. And instead, I built a second lab, took the breakthrough, and with that, hopefully at the next turn, I can already develop the monarchy. And then with five civil actions, maybe have the chance to score even more science with Aristotle. Then I draw a colonization card in the reds. Caesar Sala uses Alex immediately, increases population, builds the second lab, and takes the swordsman. A very solid turn by him. Thanks to the yellow token from Alex, he isn't in consumption yet. Has the second lab going. If there are some additional resources revealed, he potentially could even already finish the pyramids at the next turn. 
straight goes for building the second lab. Takes Leonardo, interestingly. He has no printing press or alchemy yet, but there are definitely some copies available. And with that, he maybe has already a very solid leader for later that he can now take for one civil action. He also takes the masonry and the knight, so definitely some solid cards for one civil action. On the other hand, he has no uh, full hand, and that will be a problem at the next turn, maybe. But he can potentially just elect Leonardo, especially if there is indeed uh, maybe a copy of alchemy or printing press already available for him. E5 this turn builds the stage of the Colossus, which means that he skips the mine for now, but uh, no, that can be fine. And then he takes the knights, maybe as a tactic for that already, and also Jan Shushka. So that definitely is looking like he has a tactic, maybe like Phalanx or Medieval Army. And with the strength from the Colossus and with having Jan Shushka, he definitely could uh, get a bit threatening over the next turns. At my turn I will build two stages of the Stonehenge and then develop the monarchy with the breakthrough being at five civil actions now. I also want to get out of corruption for that I uh, will or I could potentially also say I just take the corruption because it's only food cor uh, corruption and if I increase my population I go into consumption so I basically only lose one food. On one hand, but on the other hand, with not having increased my population of course I'm not prepared for events like development of warfare and religion. And also maybe the cards that I could take are also not that important to really suffer this food uh, corruption. I thought about it because I wasn't too happy to see that Caesar Salah now after having used Alex can go for Gutenberg and Alchemy very nicely at his next turn. Also the Engineering Genius might be very nice for him so I was a bit afraid that he uh, gets just a very strong start and a strong, very early economical boost to his position. And maybe I could take one of those cards away, but at the end uh, it's a four player game, I have to concentrate on myself, and with that I just increased my population as my last civil action. Of course I could have also taken one of those cards instead of the swordsman, but we just saw that e5 went for the knights, went for Jan Shushka, and now I have the chance to grab a um, military technology for only one civil action, it scores me one science with Aristotle, and at the end I didn't want to give up on the swordsman in order to take one of those other cards. Then I keep two events and then draw the immigration, the fighting band tactic and the new deposits. Caesar Sala indeed goes for Gutenberg, I think that makes a lot of sense. He can take the alchemy for free, takes the engineering genius and then uses the engineering genius A on the pyramids. That means that he can't use the engineering genius 1 on the pyramids ideally, but there is definitely a good chance that he maybe can use it on an H1 or H2 wonder at some point. Then trades the seats and opens the development of warfare. He builds one stage of the Colosseum, elects Leonardo, uh, that's probably his solution to his hand space issues, because he doesn't won't go for any um, uh, printing brass or alchemies yet, but he scores at least one resource with developing the masonry, takes the urban growth, takes the reserves, takes a second a full hand, but he can use the reserves very nicely, and now he basically has to hope that he maybe gets a copy of alchemy relatively soon. If I finishes the Colossus, it is again not building his mine yet, instead takes the Forbidden City, wants to have another project for Cleopatra, and uh, no, at the first step won't cost him any resources, maybe the next turn he can finally build his third mine and also one step off the Forbidden City. And he indeed has a tactic available, the medieval army, and uh, with that he could get quite threatening. At least he has a uh, second warrior already because of the development of warfare. Ideally, of course, you just want to have one warrior and then just build a bunch of knights when you have the medieval army tactic with Jan Shishka. So that's at least something, but still, that could get quite threatening and I have to be a bit careful about it. The good thing is that all of my opponents have already committed to an H1 leader, meaning that I can very nicely plan on what leader I want to get. And with there potentially being some military pressure and with me having three military actions thanks to the monarchy, at this point Nostradamus was the leader that I th was thinking that um, I maybe would like to have the hope most. But of course Saladin could also be very interesting, but as we see now Nostradamus is coming down the road and I thought maybe it could be nice to go for him at the next turn. Then uh, at my turn I will take the iron, I think it will be nice to increase my resource production, I also have the new deposits in hand, there are some interesting H2 wonders which is always a bit of a factor, a factor for me if I want to go for iron or if I maybe prior prioritize other stuff more, but I think iron can be quite nice, scoring me another science with Aristotle. I have to increase my population, otherwise I would have an uprising because of the development of warfare that I really wanted to take. My tactic that I have in hand is the fighting band, I have swordsmen, so I really want to have this free warrior. But then that means that I have to increase my population. Now the question is, do I just want to go for one iron upgrade, or do I, are there maybe some cards that I want to take? 
that I would be willing to take um, in order um, with the cost of delaying to go for an iron upgrade. And a bread and circus, for example, could be interesting. There is Pierre at the end. It could be nice to have happy face Lucian, but I also have the happy face from the Stonehenge. There might still be a free religion revealed, and I don't really need a bread and circus, at least short term. And also all of those other cards I thought are not really worth it to delay going for the iron, and so I just went for one iron upgrade and start uh, maybe going for some additional production. Then that's the end of my turn. I will reveal the fighting band tactic because the next turn I might go for Nostradamus and I just have some seatable events already in hand. So I don't yeah, well, just reveal the fighting band tactic to be able to keep more events. I keep the new deposits in the immigration. Also, I draw the developed territory now. Caesar Seller will develop the alchemy with Gutenberg, finishes the pyramids, increases population, takes the frugality and also the rich land. Then trades uh, Blaze the Reserves, finishes the Colosseum, takes the Printing Press, he didn't get a copy of Alchemy yet, and if he doesn't go for the Printing Press there would be maybe the risk to miss out on a copy of Alchemy potentially, or it could be very late, so he takes the Printing Press now and increases population, he has at least uh, additional happy face from the Colosseum and additional military action, but on the other hand, if I have with having Jan Shishka, it could get a bit dangerous, and committing a worker to put a Printing Press could potentially uh, no, backfire a little bit. E5 seeds and the development of planning is revealed. The options for that are development of crafts, development of agriculture and civil life. Um, E5 will take the development of crafts and with the additional resources he will first of all use the free resource from Cleo again to build one stage of the Forbidden City and then also finally build a third mine at the next turn. He has exactly enough resources to just finish the Forbidden City if he wants to. Now it's my turn and I already start seeding, of course I could have waited with going for Nostradamus, but I just thought it could be nice to already start the seeding now and the development of science is revealed. I will go for one iron upgrade that gets me out of corruption and so that's something that I definitely want to do. Then I definitely want to take Nostradamus, I think his additional strength could be quite nice and with having three military actions hopefully we'll be able to seed a lot and get a bit of culture going. And then before electing him I want to score one more science with Aristotle with taking the irrigation, a card that I don't like too much, uh, especially in four player games there are three copies of selective breeding but there's an ocean liner service in the game and with having the ocean liner service the irrigation can be very nice because it's a very cheap way to get out of famine and it could still be nice to have it in hand. It scores me a science with Aristotle so I decided to take this card then I go for Nostradamus. I could now just um, go for one more iron upgrade but then I have to think about how do I want to use my last civil action and maybe it could be fine to go for this iron upgrade um, because for example I could just develop the swordsman with my last civil action um, that I maybe need the swordsman relatively soon anyway. So it could be fine to maybe go for the iron upgrade and develop the swordsman but uh, maybe it can also be fine to uh, maybe it's also good to not commit to the swordsman yet so at the end I made a decision to finish the Stonehenge just use my civil actions very effectively but I'm actually not completely certain about this because getting one more upgrade going now and developing the swordsman could also be nice then I could finish the Stonehenge at the next turn and have still three free resources that I can put somewhere so yeah, I think both of those ways could be fine and at the end I decide to finish the Stonehenge here. Could also maybe give me the option to potentially take a wonder. The Silk Road is coming down the row. It's not certain if I would like to take the Silk Road because it could also block me from potentially strong H2 wonders but it could also still be nice to have. So um, I think it was at least uh, also part of my reasoning why I wanted to finish the Stonehenge here already. Then I draw some events, also the Open Borders Agreement that I maybe could offer, but of course it would mean having to miss out on a culture from Nostradamus for one turn. Caesar Seller uses Gutenberg to go for an upgrade, takes the iron, goes for one upgrade of the iron as well, and then takes the breakthrough, and I think he's using Gutenberg very nicely here, because one problem with Gutenberg can be of course that if you only go for one activation every turn, then the upgrades are, um, no just very slowly and you miss out on some science in the way so the ideal way of to use him is to go for those upgrades very slowly but do some other stuff as well as uh, at the same time that I think can be a very nice way to use him and now he basically gets the iron production and the alchemy production going at the same, same time and can use Gutenberg very nicely without really delaying his economy so I think that's working very nicely for him and he also has a lot of yellow cards in hand so I still think his position is definitely quite decent here. 
He also reveals the Legion tactic that he might need as soon as e5, maybe goes for a bit of strength. Now trades, uh, trades the seeds, and of course I see what he uh, what he seeds, and the first event that he seeded is actually the Reign of Terror, which I was a bit surprised about, because he will now go for the Knights, but also for one printing press, and I really thought uh, no, it could be a bit dangerous for him to see the Reign of Terror if he is now committing actually two workers into the printing press. He has the medieval army tactic, he is going up in strength for now, but Caesar Sale, if he goes for a legion tactic, can be, be stronger. E5 can be uh, relatively easily be stronger, and at the moment it's not that easily possible for him to go for another medieval army tactic. So I was a bit surprised, especially because the population loss could be quite dangerous, but maybe he was hoping for a nice HA development to be revealed, or he maybe had, um, yeah, just has some plans here on how to avoid getting hit by that event later on. E5 finishes the Forbidden City with Cleo's resources, so Cleo has given him some resources. He had delayed the mine, but maybe that's not too bad, and now he will go for Jan Shishka, takes the iron, and at the next turn he can either start going for some iron production, or maybe build a knight so, so that he actually gets some culture out of Jan Shishka, which he isn't getting for now. Now it's my turn, I see the immigration, I have the one happy face from the Stonehenge for now, and it was not a clear decision for me, but after taking a look at my turn at the end I came to the conclusion that I actually want to go for the St. Peter's Basilica, and with uh, that plan uh, the immigration of course gets even better, so that was my choice for seeding, and the development of markets is revealed now, which I will use the two additional resources from. The additional food, of course, also could be very nice, but uh, the additional resource will allow me to build a warrior and still finish the St. Peter's Basilica at the next turn. And if I go for the St. Peter's Basilica, I really would like to finish it very quickly. First of all, it could make sure that I win the immigration, and even more importantly, I want to have the wonder out of the way quickly, so that I then also can go for something like Ocean Liner Service, Harvard College, or maybe the Railroad, and with that, I took the additional resource because that allows me to finish the St. Peter's Basilica while also going for a warrior, and the warrior actually could be relevant. Um, for example, Caesar Sala can go for one swordsman and one upgrade, which would put him at 7 strength, and if I just stay at a uh, strength at the moment, then and also trades, they can build one knight, which would be a 7 strength, so if I just have one strength more than after both of my opponent's turns, hopefully I won't be the weakest, and also at my next turn, so it could be important to maybe build this warrior. But it was definitely not a clear decision for me if I should, would like to go for the St. Peter's Basilica or not, or maybe the Silk Road. Um, Especially, I didn't really like it uh, the, um, that uh, Caesar Sala gets the Silk Road. He has that many yellow cards in hand. He has some additional civil actions. I think the Silk Road will be very, very strong for him. But of course, I shouldn't take that into account too much. But definitely, I considered going for the Silk Road. It could definitely also be a very fine wonder for me. But uh, I have only five civil actions, so not the most. Also, not a nice way to upgrade my civil actions very nicely. Caesar Sala, as soon as he gets Republic or Common, has then a lot of civil actions. I am Maybe can hope to get a cop copy of Code of Laws, but I also don't have any yellow cards in hand. I have good resource production and um, the bonus from the Silk Road that is relatively cheap to build when we only take a look at the resources isn't really applying for me. So at the end it could maybe be fine, but at the end I like the St. Peter's Basilica more. It allows me to have one more free population for the military available. Uh, which could be important and just helps me a lot to have my happy faces covered long term. And so I, at the end, went for the St. Peter's Basilica. So I will take it, I will build a warrior, and I will just build one step. I definitely could have also done no, something different. I could have maybe also developed a swordsman already again. But I wanted to have the option to, at the next turn, take a copy of Code of Laws, maybe even for three civil actions, and then still being able to finish the St. Peter's Basilica. Because I think with being only on Monarchy and on five civil actions, it could be a bit tricky to play, especially if I have now a second wonder with only five civil actions, it will be very costly to take something like Ocean Liner Service, so I think it could make a huge difference whether I will be able to get a copy of Code of Laws. I could have taken one already this turn, but then I would have no St. Peter's Basilica, and I think I also need something nice to invest my resources into. Maybe I could go for the Alchemy at the next turn, but it's relatively late already then, and I didn't like that too much. So I didn't want to grab this copy of Code of Laws in this turn for three civil actions, but I might be willing to grab one for three civil actions at the next turn, and if I do so, now that I have built a step, I can uh, no, 
uh, take that uh, code of laws while still finishing the St. Peter's Basilica, being prepared for the immigration and just having that wonder finished and also being prepared to go for something like Ocean Liner Service or Harvard College. One thing that's, uh, that is bad about my decision to go for the resource from the development of markets is that now I very likely, unless the age won't end, which could happen, but it might end uh, before my next turn and then I will be stuck at three food. But at least there's still the hope to either that the age won't end or that the development of trade routes is the last development. And um, yeah, but, but that um, definitely could be a bit annoying, but at least there are some ways how I can maybe hope to not have to face this issue. At the end I discard some cards, keep the Rebellion, that will be a very nice card now that I go, now that I go for the St. Peter's Basilica and also the Open Borders Agreement, um, which could still potentially be nice to offer at some point if I don't have any nice events to see it. Also I draw now even more events, the Pestilence and the Barbarians. Now it's Caesar Salah's turn, he will go for an upgrade with Gutenberg and indeed goes for the Silk Road. I think that will be a very strong wonder for him, he builds one step, can then use the Richland immediately for three resources instead of only two. And then he also has enough uh, resources left to go for one swordsman, one upgrade, and now you can see he's, he's at exactly seven strength. And thanks to having built this warrior, I am now not um, weaker than him. Or at least I win the tie break during, during my next turn. And I was quite happy to see that the development of trade routes are revealed, meaning now I hopefully won't be stuck at three food and will be able to increase my population one more time. And Dreze will go for the irrigation. He doesn't go for the Code of Laws, which I was happy to see, making it more likely that I will be able to get a copy of Code of Laws because there's still another one in the deck. He goes for some food production that, of course, will be nice with maybe having committed those population to the printing press. He builds one knight, but that only also means that he is at seven strength, so at my turn I won't be one of the two weakest. e5 seats and opens the vast territory and actually I forgot to talk about it, that was the event that uh, Treize just seeded at the moment and uh, when I saw him seeding that I was definitely quite surprised because it was quite a commitment. Maybe he has a lot of colonization cards in hand, he bids 5, so maybe he has uh, 3 colonization cards and bids, uh, has bid a knight and those cards, maybe he has also bid an army, we don't know it. And I wasn't happy to see it because I am not that nicely prepared. I went all in for this colony. I would have been willing to pay everything that I have for it. Um, but at the end e5 is able to win it and he is actually able to win it for just a warrior. And I wasn't really happy to see this um, combination of events. First that uh, trades the seeding the vast territory and then e5 immediately winning it for only one warrior. I think that gives him a very big boost. And I was not too happy about no, him getting this colony that cheaply. E5 will also take a copy of Code of Laws, meaning I, if I want to go for one, have maybe indeed to grab it for three civil actions at my next turn. He goes up to six civil actions now, builds a knight going and another knight. And the good thing for him is that now that he has sent his warrior away for the nice yellow tokens, he also has only one warrior, can easily go for another knight and is then at 15 strength. So I don't know, I think this colony really helped him quite a bit in this uh, position. And then with the last two civil actions, he increased his population two more times. Also, I think e5 prepared an event, and the event that he seeded were the uncertain borders, which of course makes a lot of sense. He will have now Jan Shishka, and now after having won the colony, which of course he didn't know at the point when he made the decision about seeding, but now he can even more easily go for a lot of strength and, and then maybe win the uncertain borders at the end. He only takes one card from the row, meaning at my turn the age actually won't end, but that also means that there uh, is a chance that the last copy of Code of Laws won't be available for me at the next turn, and I was really hoping that maybe the copy of Code of Laws comes out, because I think it could really be important for me to play age 2 on 6 civil actions and not only on 5. At my turn I then seed the Rebellion into the deck, that should be a very fine event uh, for me, hopefully. And the Knowledge of the Ancients is revealed, giving relatively similar value to all of the players. And there is indeed one of the copies of Kodo, the second copy of Code of Laws, and I also am indeed able, uh, I am indeed willing to take it for three, develop it, spend some of my science that I have, and then just finish the St. Peter's Basilica, being nicely prepared for the immigration, and also having finished my wonder so that it, uh, if there is an early ocean liner service, I am prepared to take it, and being on six civil actions definitely makes it easier for me to take it. And then I build another warrior because I know that there is the Reign of Terror in the deck and I hopefully um, with building this warrior won't get hit by it. 
I keep the pestilence and the open borders agreement, the barbarians it's very likely that I might have the most culture so I don't want to push that into the deck. And in case Caesar Sala end rates it gets stronger and I'm the weakest then maybe offering the open borders agreement could be a nice alternative to just seeding with Nostradamus. Caesar Sala uses the frugality with the Silk Road bonus, increases population again, builds an additional swordsman, upgrades one, is now 10 strength, making sure that he gets even stronger than me, is now one of the two strongest, takes the urban growth, the drama, and goes for his last iron upgrade, at the next turn he has enough resources to maybe finish the Silk Road. Dreize takes the Bread and Xerxes, develops them, and with the help of those he is able to not have an uprising issue, but he is only at 8 strength, so at the moment he is the weakest and he is now in danger of getting hit by the Reign of Terror that he has seeded. E5 at his turn will be pushing again, and as indeed the Reign of Terror he revealed, so so far the event that Raid says he didn't really work out that nicely for him, uh, losing the population is definitely annoying. And e5, the event that he seeded, is the inhabited territory one. So he is pushing another colony, he has the bonus from the Colossus. Maybe he has already some H2 colonization cards drawn with the Colossus bonus. So um, yeah, he um, uh, seeds now another yellow token colony into the deck. And will also start going for some iron upgrades relatively late, but it could still be very nice to have those. And then he takes the revolutionary idea and the cannons. Doesn't take either strategy or the, the constitutional monarchy. My turn I'm not the weakest and I made the decision to see the pestilence. I will be able to increase my population one time and I also will be able to win the immigration hopefully, probably tied with the Dreze, so I was willing to put the pestilence into the deck. The event revealed other new deposits. I and Caesar Sala gained the most resources out of it. However, those new deposits will mean that I won't get out of corruption this turn, so basically for now only giving me, giving me full resources. And I still have some science left and made a decision to go for the strategy, just making sure to be again a bit stronger, being able to keep more cards in hand, and also just taking this card away from my opponents. And so I went for the strategy, developed it, even after developing the strategy I have still 6 science left, which I think is important because one nice thing that I could maybe go for at the next turn could be something like uh, scientific methods, maybe even journalism, even though that could be a bit dangerous with just having seeded a pestilence, but uh, yeah. I still have that amount of science left, and I will make sure to even have more science left with taking the cultural heritage with my last two civil actions. It's definitely a bit costly. Um, I will have corruption, but there was not an easy way around it, even if I built, for example, a religion or another lab, that would mean that I still would have corruption. And I could build another lab maybe to get some more science, but um, that would also be a bit of a commitment, and maybe if the journalism is still available for me the next turn, then are no other nice alternatives for me to spend my resources and civil actions on, then it could maybe be nice to not have committed to a lab yet, and so at the end I just went for the cultural heritage to have some additional science, which I think could be important, for example, if the first thing that I invest my next science into is not a scientific method, and instead something like selective breeding, or maybe the rifleman to get more strength going, then it could be very important to have the additional science from the cultural heritage to then to then so that it then doesn't take that long to go for another technology. Then that's the end of my turn. I will draw some cards. Sadly no event, so I won't be able to seed with Nostradamus in the next turn, but maybe I can offer one of those pacts potentially. Caesar Sala gets an early copy of Constitutional Monarchy, so I think his position is still looking very strong. He then just finishes the Silk Road, so the new deposits also for him sadly means corruption, but he has now a lot of civil and military actions, has very decent science and resource production, he only needs something like either ocean liner service or selective breeding, then he has all areas of his economy covered, and with that it's definitely looking quite strong for him. Dreize then will go for an early copy of coal, goes for one upgrade, sadly he also will have corruption, but he has now some coal going. Then it's E5's turn and he seeds, and the event that he seeds is the inhabited territory 2, so another inhabited territory into the deck, and the event revealed is the wealthy territory, which I at the end was not willing to bid, especially with knowing that there are some other interesting colonies coming, I have a lot of resources at the moment or anyway, and uh, so no, I just rather wanted to keep my colonization cards for those other colonies. E5 is now able to win the colony for one night, so definitely quite nice for him. 
And he then goes for one and two more upgrades for his iron. The additional resources definitely help him out a bit. He rebuilds this knight, builds another knight, going up to 15 strength, takes the journalism, increases population, and takes the urban growth. At my next turn, I uh, said can't see it, but I have this early scientific cooperation drawn. And even though I don't have the most science production for now, I have at least a cultural heritage. And it's very early and long term, this pack can just generate quite a lot of value. So I was really thinking about, or I really wanted to offer it, and really had to think about which player do I want to have this pack with long term, and which players may be also willing to accept it. Caesar Sala could definitely accept it. Um, but he also has a lot of civil actions, has at the moment already quite some strong science production, so it could be a bit dangerous, and also I thought that at this point Caesar Sala maybe has the strongest position, and I didn't necessarily want to help him out with the pact, and also was a little bit afraid that maybe at the end he could get too much value out of it, just because he has that many civil actions, which is also an important factor to develop many technologies. Traitze, I definitely would be happy if I, uh, he would accept this pact, but I just feel that he might reject it. He has some decent science production, has some science saved up, but he has no technology in hand, has uh, very few civil actions, so maybe at the next turn he won't develop any technology, uh, it's definitely uh, not clear if he will, and with that he might not be willing to accept the pact, also he still needs a government form, so he, a lot of science will just go into one technology, and at the end I just thought he maybe won't be willing to accept it, and so at the end I offered it to E5, because he... Um, could definitely get some nice value out of it. He has the revolutionary idea in hand. He might go for journalism uh, soon, but uh, I was hoping that maybe he we get at least a similar amount of value out of it and maybe can keep the pack for a while so that um, no, I just get some nice benefits out of it. E5, of course, as well, but it will give us both an advantage over the other players. And E5 also accepts the pact. I was a bit afraid that he will get Newton at his next turn with the journalism. Then, of course, it could get a bit dangerous. I was hoping that maybe Caesar Salah could go for Newton because Gutenberg has done his job. And even though Newton with alchemy is not ideal, it could still be nice to just have a new leader very quickly. Um, if not, then there's the danger that Newton will fall into E5 sand, which could potentially be dangerous. For my turn, I have a lot of resources saved up that I want to spend as a railroad that I maybe could spend my resources on, but I read or read I wanted to keep myself open for Harvard College and Ocean Liner Service because I have a lot of resource production already, and um, science and population income would definitely be the more important things at the moment. And so I made a decision to spend my resources into the Rifleman. Um, and thanks to the pack, I can develop those now for cheaper. Those will just allow me to get stronger and um, I can use two of my three military actions to go for those upgrades. And uh, yeah, I could now go for another upgrade, but that would come at a cost of missing out on a draw, and instead I still have this one free population, as of course the pestilence coming, but before the pestilence can be revealed, there will be the immigration revealed, so I can still spend this um, population without um, uh, yeah, having to fear the pestilence. And no. Yeah. What, uh, so I uh, thought about if I maybe want to build a religion, or maybe a third lab. And there's an efficient upgrade that I would like to take, and so I was just thinking about how to use my last civil actions, and at the end I went for the additional lab, because the religion, I just don't need a happy face at the moment. It would of course mean that Dreitze doesn't get an additional population out, but I thought his position is maybe not that great at the moment. Of course, if he gets a republic or something, it could get stronger very quickly, but at the moment he's behind in strength. There's only very few civil actions. He will get coal, so he definitely can improve his position over the next turns, but I definitely thought that I shouldn't factor that uh, in a lot in my decision making to remove the population from him with building a religion. And I think especially with having the science pack, the additional science production from the lab is just a lot more important. And there is also Bill Gates in the game at the end, so having a lot of labs could potentially be nice. That gets me out of corruption now without having to go for another upgrade to Ralph Man. And then I said the efficient upgrade is a card that I would like to take, and then I thought maybe I just played a cultural heritage with my last civil action. And I thought it could be a decent turn, however, I was thinking about what leader I maybe want to go for. And there is a leader available for me now for one civil action, and that is Maria Theresa. And yeah, there are of course a lot of other leaders left. Nobel, of course, could be very fine. 
Um, then there are Napoleon, at the moment I have only warriors, Catherine, but I have already five military actions, Shakespeare I'm not really that nicely be prepared, I'm not that nicely prepared for James Watt, uh, could maybe help me to go for selective readings potentially, but uh, no, also is maybe not the ideal leader to get. So there are some leaders that could be decent, but uh, no, at the end maybe Maria Theresa is a leader that could work better for me and is also a leader that I can take now. I can take now, her now for one civil action, so relatively cheaply. And so at the end I just took Maria Theresa and my plan was to just keep her in hand and let Nostradamus produce a bit of value and then go for her later on because I want to go for additional population income anyway and then, um, yeah. Uh, if that should happen, then Maria Theresa hopefully will produce me some decent value with uh, some additional science and culture and additional resources. That was my first plan, however I changed my plan and at the end actually made a decision to elect Maria Theresa already. And there are some reasons to do this. First of all, Nostradamus of course can still produce me some value over the next turns. Um, but the problem is I don't have any event in hand for now, I don't know if I will draw an event that I actually would like to see it. So um, it could be that I don't get any culture out of him, at least at the next turn. And the strength, at the moment I'm at 13 strength, so um, I am one of the two strongest, I'm not the weakest anyway, and I can easily go for more strength, so the strength bonus from Nostradamus is also maybe not uh, doing that much. The thing that I was uh, unhappy the most about with uh, now going for Maria Theresa is that there's just one tiny event left that I won't have knowledge about, so sadly I won't have full knowledge about the next event deck, which is definitely a bit annoying, and I thought that I maybe sh could sh keep Nostradamus just because of that reason. But um, Maria Theresa might actually generate some value for me already uh, immediately, because the next event will be the immigration, so I will gain one population and already a bit of additional science and culture from her. Then also there are two inhabited territories coming and uh, maybe I have a chance to win at least one of those if I may be willing to send an army or something and then I can also cheaply rebuild with Maria Theresa and the first inhabited territory could also already be revealed before my next turn. So there's the chance to get even two science and two culture out of Maria Theresa. And then I still have some warriors that I can upgrade, so I can also use the resources maybe relatively nicely. And with that I just thought those things are maybe at this point of the game more important than potentially scoring some culture with Nostradamus, especially if it's not because it's, uh, it's not even guaranteed that I can score some culture. And uh, yeah, so with that I um, at the end went for Maria Theresa. And um, with that committed to a leader, I don't know yet how nicely I will be able to get additional population income and how quickly, so I, it's not an ideal Maria, Maria, but I at the end still thought it might be worth it to elect her already, and then with my last civil action I went for the efficient upgrade. Then I draw some cards, and as you can see I indeed draw no events, so I, when, if I would have kept Nostradamus I would not be able to see it. I draw a colonization card, card, which I was happy to see, maybe increasing my chances to win at least one of the inhabited territories, and also the Napoleonic army, which could allow me to maybe go for some military at some point. Caesar Sala will go for the justice system at his turn, takes the organized religion, the railroad, that is, um, yeah, will be a nice wonder for him, also maybe uh, he removes it from at, uh, Dreze, and then with his last two civil actions he builds a religion interestingly, is maybe a bit afraid of the rebellion and rightly so because that event will actually be coming at the next event deck and then he also takes the efficient upgrade which I'm not certain if that is the right decision because he has a lot of resource maybe just building a step of the railroad could at the end be more important, maybe he wanted to deny it, it's still three resource for one civil action so a fine deal but he has a lot of resources with the railroad, he will have even more resource production and maybe at the end it could be more important to have already one step built especially because that could increase his chances to maybe get the ocean liner service the next turn. And, but no, the efficient upgrade of course uh, could still be decent, but maybe the step could have been better here. Dreitz uh, offers the International Trade Agreement to Caesar Sala, so sadly I'm not part of this pact. Dreitz is scoring an additional resource, Caesar Sala is scoring an additional food production from now on. Dreitz then goes for one additional resource upgrade, takes the wave of nationalism, increases population and then also takes the frugality. I think especially the frugality will be an important card for him. He doesn't take the Republic, but maybe he's hoping that he can still have a shot at getting the Republic at the next turn or maybe a later copy of it. 
E5C, sadly, of course, now I don't see any longer what event it is, so that I really would have liked to still get this value out of Nostradamus to have the full event uh, knowledge, but uh, now I don't know what H2 event he seeded, but I had immigration is revealed now, and I'm part of that, um, and get a population, also getting some value out of Maria Theresa. Caesar Sala didn't go for Newton at his turn, meaning that E5 has now the chance to go for him, and he indeed will go for him, elects him, builds a warrior before to not fall behind in strength, takes the constitutional monarchy, wants to be able to go for this government form, it's the second copy, and I think for him, with having already two additional civil actions from Forbidden City and Code of Laws, the constitutional monarchy is just a way better solution than the Republic, so he doesn't want to risk missing out on that, and then he develops the journalism with the scientific cooperation pact, and also for free with Newton, and builds one journalism going up to six um, science production. So with that, I was a bit afraid that maybe the science at the end could be more valuable for E5, but when I mean, you take a look at the row, there is also the scientific method coming down the row for me, so I might also be able to increase my science production, and the good thing is I have already my government form, at least for now, maybe I want to upgrade it to an H3 government form later on, but E5 has still to invest quite a bit of science into this common, so I was hoping that even though he has Newton, um, with me getting scientific method and with him having to spend a lot of science in the conmon, hopefully I will, it will still be a pact where we both gain uh, some nice value out of it. At my turn, I um, don't have any event to see it, but I can play the spy. I have uh, some aggressions left anyway. I have a free military action, so I decided to play the spy against Treze, especially because there could have been even a chance that he might not be able to defend it. And then I really, especially with having the scientific cooperation back, want to go for the scientific method. Uh, nice way for me to invest my resources. Going for two upgrades and then also one upgrade to Warrior, um, making me the strongest. I know that Uncertain Borders is coming, that if I have C has seeded into the deck earlier. And with my last civil action, I then take the breakthrough to have even more science available. I could have also just already played a Cultural Heritage. Or maybe take the Opera, which can be a very nice happy face solution with the St. Peter's Basilica, could maybe work nicely with Chaplin and the Hollywood, so it could be nice to have a copy available, but with having the science pegged and with maybe uh, wanting to go for an H3 government form at some point, I just thought that the breakthrough is maybe the card that I want to have more. Going for the scientific method, of course, means that I won't be able to go for one of those copies for of selective breeding, but Dreitz has already committed to irrigation, so I was hoping that I have the good chance to get the last copy. There is also still the chance to get the ocean liner service, so I thought it's I don't necessarily have to grab one of those copies for three civil actions and can uh, go for the scientific method first. I keep the colonization card and also the Napoleonic army, I draw even another colonization card, so now I could be quite nicely prepared to maybe win the inhabited territories. Caesar Sala goes for Nobel, get, increases the science production with that, and then he will just finish the railroad, takes the selective breeding and the opera. Then it's Treitz's turn, and he will go for Napoleon. He is definitely a bit behind in strength. He will go for the Republic, so I think the additional military action and also the additional strength from Napoleon will be quite nice for him. He's now at least at 12 strength. Goes for one more upgrade, plays the wave of nationalism, and with going for two knights and revealing the Hussars tactic, he's now actually even the strongest. And at my turn, I might even be at the risk of being the weakest, because there is the uncertain borders coming seated by e5, so maybe at his turn he um, maybe wants to get stronger if possible, but actually is willing to seed and is also a bit punished by it. The uncertain borders are revealed. Sadly, at the end, I wasn't able to win it, but I also was only strongest for a very sh uh, short amount of time. So um, at the end, I was mainly happy that I didn't lose to it, and Reitz uh, was re uh, um, rewarded for going for Napoleon immediately with getting the additional yellow token, and this time E5 uh, has seeded an event that at the end didn't work out that nicely for him, but of course at the time when he seeded it, he hasn't, Jan Shushka had a lot of population, so I think it was definitely a good seed at the time. E5 will go for the constitutional monarchy, he takes the second copy of Selective Breeding, the last copy of Ralph Man, the Engineering Genius, and uh, yeah, just basically takes a bunch of cards, has now a lot of civil actions to work with. At my turn, I made a decision to seat a Cold War, I'm not the weakest, of, but of course I also know the remaining events, those are the inhabited territory one, Barbarians, no. That's wrong. The uh, Rebellion inhabited Territory 1 and the Pestilence, those three events. Uh, so there is nothing that would be really bad for me, and maybe the inhabited Territory it could be very nice to win it now. 
And the event revealed is the Pestilence, so sadly in no inhabited territory yet. But that could even give me a chance at my turn, because my first idea for the turn was to just take the cannons, take the cavalry man, so that I can go for the Napoleonic army for certain, and then maybe just develop the cannons using the Pact, um, building one cannon already using the resource of Maria Theresa, and then maybe um, going for one more upgrade to my labs, and playing the cultural heritage, so just doing some stuff. And that I think would be a very solid turn, but at the end I actually went for a different line, but I'm not certain if it is really worth it. But uh, in the end I thought it could be very interesting to go for something like this, and I made a decision to go for the navigation. Because I know that there are two inhabited territories coming, with having Maria those are especially valuable for me. It could be very nice to win both, or at least one of them, ideally of course I inhabit a territory too. And the navigation has just increased my chance to win those territories, maybe even both of them even more. I have uh, some colonization cards that I can keep in hand thanks to my many mil military actions. I have not the navigation. If I don't take the navigation, there's definitely the chance that my opponents could go for it. These also has a lot of science lying around, but especially E5, who knows about those colonies, could go for the navigation at this next turn, and then it will actually get quite tricky for me to maybe win one of those. Maybe if I build an army it could still be um, possible, but it would definitely be more costly. And so at the end, even though it's definitely quite expensive to go for the navigation, I made a decision to go for it, um, to just to maybe get a, a lot better chance of winning um, one uh, or maybe even two, uh, both of those territories. But going for the navigation comes at a big cost. And it is not only because it's uh, because I take it for three civil actions, but now I will use the resource of Maria Theresa to go for an upgrade from Warrior's Drive Man. Now I have to make a decision. Either I take Corruption, which would not be ideal, or I uh, miss out on the Cavalry Man. At the end I made a decision to actually miss out on the Cavalry Man. It definitely could backfire. Uh, if I miss out on the second copy as well, there is at least still a second copy, then I uh, don't have the chance to go for the Napoleonic Army tactic. But Caesar uh, Salah, I was thinking very likely will take this copy of Cavalry Man, and then both of my opponents have knights already, of course, uh, traits with having the Hazard's tactic. Could still have an interest maybe in upgrading those to Cavalry Man, but I was hoping that maybe I have a chance to get a second copy, and if not, not maybe a copy of Tanks at some point. It's definitely a risk, but I also wasn't willing to uh, take Eruption and miss out on the Science Boost. I think getting the Science Boost from uh, going for even one more upgrade could be quite nice, especially with me maybe wanting to go for Government Form at some point, with having the Scientific Cooperation Pact. So I didn't want to miss out on that, and at the end I was willing to skip the Cavalry Man, but that uh, made it definitely a lot tougher decision for me to actually go for the Navigation. And maybe it could uh, actually also be the better play to just skip the Navigation and do something solid with just taking both of those military techs now. Now I have now the chance to get both of them for one civil action and then having both of them for certain and having a chance to go for the Napoleonic army. Also I don't play the cultural heritage and there's the chance that I might lose it before the next turn. So um, no, I'm, I wasn't sure when I made the decision and also looking better back at the turn I'm not sure if it was really worth it to pay that many civil actions for the navigation. But um, then again those in inhabited territories could be very nice to have for me with having Maria Theresa, especially because I can also cheaply rebuild. I keep all of my colonization cards in the tactic. I was willing to discard a war, of course, with maybe um, if I should get the next copy of Cavalry Man, and uh, then uh, with having the Napoleonic army tactic, it could be definitely nice to go for war. But I just thought I need to set up some population first, and then it will be very late, and I just rather want to make sure to have as good chances to win um, those colonies as possible. Caesar Salasid, sadly there is still no inhabited territory re revealed, instead the rebellion, Caesar lo lo loses two civil actions, but he has a lot of them, so it's maybe not too bad for him. He then goes for the religion, goes for an upgrade, goes for the selective breeding, goes for an upgrade, takes the cavalry man and the patriotism. So he just continues setting up his economy very nicely and still I think has quite a nice position. Then Traitze will finish the Statue of Liberty, uh, has some additional yellow tokens now, that definitely will make the irrigation a lot better long term solution for him. He uses the frugality and gets some population out, takes the scientific method and the reserves. Then E5 will just go for the ocean liner service, 
So it's two stages that get his, that gets him out of corruption and then takes the rich land. So he will go for the ocean liner service as a um, way to get more population going. He has only one farm at the moment, so just going for selective breeding would not give him a lot of population quickly. And so instead he just goes for the ocean liner service. It's definitely a very strong wonder and he can also use the engineering genius very nicely on it. That means that I won't go for the Ocean Liner service for, with Maria Trees and that I can go for the Selective Breeding at my next turn. H3 starts, E5 immediately gets some additional H3 draws, hopefully no colonization cards, so that he doesn't get a help for his colony. Sadly I have lost my H1 colonization cards now. I seed an event into the deck, I think it maybe is the Cold War, but I think I actually seeded a Cold War already in earlier, so I'm not 100% certain. I think it could. Uh, I think it was the Strategic Territory 2 that I've seeded now. I have the colonization bonus, so I thought I maybe can push that one into the deck. And the event revealed I know it, what it is, it is the Inhabited Territory 1. And it was not willing to go all in for that, because I know that the Inhabited Territory 2 is coming, so I don't want to bid an army or all of my cards, so I just was willing to bid one Rifeman and one card, Definitely knowing that it might not be enough to win the territory, but I just didn't. I wanted to keep some stuff for the second one, and so at the end, uh, Caesar Sala is able to win it, but at least he has to pay a price for it. Three swordsmen is definitely not cheap, but maybe if he can use it to make a transition, it can definitely be worth it. And then with having Maria Teresa, of course, I want to get additional food production now that I have the chance to go for it. And I will develop the selective breeding, go for one for two upgrades so that I can increase my population at the next turn. And then I have one civil action left. Is again a copy of Breakthrough that I could take? There's a copy of Architecture, which could be nice to have, maybe to be able to take and finish an H3 Wonder later on and still also save me some resources and some urban buildings. I think both of those cards could be very nice to have. But with just being at the beginning of H3, at the end, I made the decision to develop the cannons using the science pact because there could just be a lot of interesting stuff in the row. There could be air forces, there could be a government form, there could already be a wonder that I maybe want to take, there could be an interesting H3 leader. Um, I maybe need to take the cavalry man, so there could just be a lot of stuff and I just at the end thought it might be more important to spend the civil action on the cannons already because I have already three labs, so maybe the architecture doesn't save me that many resources, especially if the game is maybe a bit more military heavy, which could actually be in my interest with having Maria Theresa and her bonuses. And I have some strong science production, so maybe I don't really need a breakthrough, breakthrough at the end, even though of course it could still be nice to have it. One downside is that now I am at 17 science and no actually it's not it's not a downside because uh, the democracy actually only costs 15 science for me so even if E5 develops a lot of technologies hopefully I will be able to go for the democracy if that should be available early for me because that of course would be a card that could give me quite a nice boost. I will draw some cards and I draw another colonization card so while I missed out on the H1 inhabited territory hopefully I will now have a good chance to win the second one and also the impact of strength and the uh, um, uh, shock troops tactic I draw. For the shock, tr shock troops tactic is of course a bit annoying to already have committed to the cannons, um, but it would also be maybe quite costly to go for that many cavalry men, so I really have to think about if I want to do this actually, and so um, no, um, it's maybe not too bad, especially if I at the end should manage to win the colony for only one and rife men instead of maybe two. Caesar Sala plays the patriotism, and with a Silk Road bonus even, so that's very nice for him. And then, uh, wait a minute, I'm back in a sec. Alright, I'm back. And now, Caesar Sala has played the Patriotism <coughs> very nicely with the Silk Road bonus. And now we can see if he maybe has indeed a tactic that he can use from transitioning. Builds two cannons, goes for an upgrade. Now he can use the efficient upgrade that he has taken earlier. Takes the break through the architecture, but he doesn't reveal a tactic yet. So maybe he has still one in hand. Or maybe he just uh, went for the cannons because it works for more tactics. Hoping that he will draw a nice, a nice H3 tactic that he can go for at some point. And uh, now with that he stays at 15 strength, draws his first H3 cards and then trades the seeds. 
and opens the inhabited territory. I was willing to bid, I think, two Rifemen and all of my cards. I was, of course, hoping to only win it for one Rifeman, but at the end, I have even to pay two Rifemen, two colonization cards to win the territory. Definitely quite a bit of a price, but especially with having Maria Theresa with scoring the additional signs and uh, culture now on top of this territory, and also with being able to cheaply rebuild, I think that is definitely uh, worth it to me for me to pay this price. Rates it in this turn, builds an additional uh, or builds a scientific method, takes the movies and also the mechanized agriculture for three civil actions. An interesting decision that he takes it for that expensive. Um, could have maybe hoped to get it cheaper at the next turn, but maybe he really wants to make sure to get more population going. Now it's E5's turn, he seeds, so the event deck will flip now, and now we also know what, what the event was that I didn't have knowledge about with Nostradamus, and the event is the freedom of movement. And E5 will then go for computers, that will give him a big boost with having Newton, and I was now of course even more afraid that the scientific operation pack could potentially be bad at some point, especially with E5 having that many cheap technologies in hand. He also then goes for the ocean liner service, can finish it, increases population, goes for the selective breeding, fixing his famine issues very cheaply, can develop the selective breeding for very cheap and for free with Newton, takes the urban growth, and the reserves in his position is definitely also quite strong by now, has a lot of civil actions, has now 10 science production, the ocean liner service, 8 resource production, I think he moved um, a philosophy to iron with the freedom of movement and uh, no, with that his position is definitely looking strong and maybe at the end of his turn we can also take a quick look at the overview now that we are at the, uh, at the beginning of age 3. And now we can see that I have a little bit of a culture lead, but really not by that much. And I think I don't have the best economy here. It's definitely a decent economy. I have now gained some additional yellow, yellow token to free population with the inhabited territory. I um, no, have a lot of science production. But I think both E5's and Caesar Salah's economy are a bit better just because they have even more civil actions. They have both more resource production. At least I gain additional resource from Maria Theresa, so that's definitely something. E5 has new and a lot of science production and Caesar Salah. No. no, maybe at that point E5's position is potentially even stronger because he has the additional science production, otherwise their positions are relatively similar. So both of them have quite a strong position. Trades has definitely also a position um, that has some potential, has not as many civil actions, has not as much pr as much production, but uh, yeah, definitely also a decent economy. So at this point, I think the game can still go in every direction. If I maybe can manage to set a lot of, a lot of military with Mary Teresa, that could have potentially some potential. Um, if there's an early democracy, that could give me a big boost and improve my position immediately. So, um, no, I think my economy is maybe not as strong, but I at least have still a little bit of a culture lead, have maybe some military potential if I get the right cards. And so with that, I was hoping that I can maybe finish this game with a nice result. Then this turn I still get a chance to take the cavalry man, and with uh, no, still having the Napoleonic army tactic in hand, I made a decision to uh, want to go for the cavalry man. And there's also an early copy of Air Force. Now we can see why uh, maybe uh, or why I wanted to have some f more free civil actions for the beginning of H3, because that can just always be the case that there are some important cards to take. But now there was the big question, how do I want to position myself with the military? And as you can see, I actually at the end made a decision to move a rifleman to cannons with the freedom of movement. I could have also not done this, maybe developed a cavalry man now, I could start building some cavalry man, and I then maybe could start um, positioning myself so that I can go for the shock troops tactic. And I uh, maybe don't have to commit too much into it yet, so if I draw something like Modern Army, I could still go for it. But of course, if I get something like um, Entrenchments, Positional Army, or Mechanized Army, then I couldn't go for those tactics very nicely, but I could also still go for the Napoleonic Army, of course. But the Shock Troops tactic is just quite a big of an investment. I have to invest into a lot of cavalry men. It's not the best H3 tactic. It could be nice. It was not a it was a close decision for me how I want to do it. But at the end, I was just hoping um, when I leave myself quite flexible with maybe an, now um, building one more cannon or something like this, then I am 
no, I really am very flexible. I could go for mechanized army tactics, I could still go for modern army tactics, I could go for positional army for entrenchments, and those uh, tactics are maybe a bit more flexible or better than the shock troops tactic. Maybe I should just work with the tactic that I have. Um, so I was not certain about this decision. Uh, maybe I should just start building a lot of cavalry men. But um, it's also not uh, clear yet. If I want to go for a lot of military, I can always go for the Napoleonic army tactic. And so at the end, I made a decision to just position myself more, to be more flexible for tactics instead of um, committing to go for a lot of cavalry men. And if I don't go for a lot of cavalry men, then the tactic is also not giving me that much strength. And so, um, no. At the end, I made a decision to go for this additional cannon. I could have just built another cannon, but I actually made a decision to build one air force and one cannon using two of my three military actions, making me the strongest. There is the Cold War coming, so I want to be a bit stronger. And I could have, I also thought about just building a cannon and a rifleman maybe, that would also get me stronger, but then again I would not be nicely prepared for the mechanized army tactic. And so instead I committed already to the one air force using the pact again, and with my last civil action I then took the reserves, because if I indeed should build a lot of military, then um, every uh, additional resource that I can use for the military could be important, and a revolutionary idea of course also could be nice to have, but at the end is maybe not as important. Instead of going for this air force and all, I could have maybe also done something peaceful, but I just think it's important to have the air forces also to potentially defend myself, and just because I think if I get the right cards, I have a lot of military potential. And one piece of the puzzle, maybe I already get this turn, I have a war of a culture now available, also an armed intervention, so if I now get an interesting H3 tactic on top, then I really could maybe go for a big war, and again, maybe I should have just kept um, two riflemen, started going for cavalry men, and worked with the tactic that I had. Um, no, so I am, I'm not sure if that was the right decision. Um, but it just felt like it is a big commitment to go for that many, and um, no, it's, um, I didn't have a war yet, so I don't know if I really want to go for that many, but I could still go for the Napoleonic army tactic, so... I am not really sure if that was the right decision, but it could it could definitely get rewarded if I draw something like positional army, modern army, or entrenchments, or also mechanized army potentially, even though it's not ideal because I have one rifleman. Caesar Sala builds another cannon, but not revealing uh, something like fortifications yet, but he still has one tactic in hand, so maybe he just uh, didn't, doesn't want to reveal it yet to his opponents, maybe he doesn't want to get stronger, so maybe uh, wanting to make it that I don't get additional resource from Maria Theresa, or he has now something like mechanized army tactic because he is taking the tanks, has the cavalryman already, maybe he wants to have the tanks to potentially get more strength per unit. Traitze seeds and a strategic territory is revealed. I think I was willing to bid two units and my card for that, um, but at the end it is not enough. I would have really liked to win that one because I would have uh, even more chances to draw a uh, tactic. I think that was also part of my reasoning why I went for the more flexible line to maybe get an even better tactic because I knew that I maybe have some chances to win the strategic territory, but at the end I am not able to win it and instead e5 wins it and he is even able to win it for just a warrior, so that's very nice for him. And uh, no, he has now some additional strength and a lot of additional draws. Dreitze has taken the mechanized agriculture for very expensive at the turn before, and now he is also making use out of it immediately. He's going for an upgrade, upgrades another lab, has now definitely quite a strong economy going, is even going for another upgrade. Definitely is maybe looking at the International Red Cross with his investment into the mechanized agriculture, and then he is taking the reserves. And definitely has quite a strong economy. As soon as he goes for chaplain, he also gets a lot of culture production, so he might definitely position himself quite nicely. But he might be a bit in danger with the military, because Hussars with only knights definitely won't be a solution that will allow him to defend himself in case there are some big strength numbers going on. But he gets a bit of help with the military alliance offered by E5, which at least will mean that I will get additional resource out of Maria Theresa, so that's definitely nice. And then E5 will go for the team sports and builds one, takes the urban growth, takes the military theory and the engineering genius. Now it is my turn, I uh, could potentially push an event into the deck and I also made a decision to see the impact of strength, I'm not the weakest at the moment. 
I have the Napoleonic army for certain, still maybe the chance to get even a nice H3 tactic that I can use. I have the air forces, I have Maria Theresa, so it's a bit it's a bit of a risk. Maybe I could also be fine with not using my politics phase, but on the other hand, I was a bit afraid that with the strong economical position of my opponents, maybe I have to take some a bit of a risk. Maybe it's just start seeding, get some additional culture out of seeding, having the chance to put maybe multiple impacts into the deck, even though maybe there are not that many impacts that work nicely for me with my opponents having some strong economies going. Um, maybe it could also be fine to wait, especially with it because the cold was in the deck that could be revealed now. Um, no, so I'm not certain if it is the right decision to commit to this already, but maybe if I load, uh, later on also maybe can manage to go for one or even two wars, maybe an aggression at the last turn or something, then it could also be nice to maybe have used the politics phase already. The event revealed is not a cold war, instead they can make progress, giving everyone uh, some additional stuff. Maybe also seated by Dreze, who now, after having gone for mechanized agriculture and having the railroad, def un doesn't have the railroad but a lot of coal mines, definitely gets the most out of this, uh, with getting quite a lot of value. I this turn will increase my population, and I made the decision to indeed go uh, again go for one more air force. I'm not certain about this decision, I could also just build a rifleman. Again, um, because the first Air Force isn't really a big of a commitment, because if I want to go for tactic, I definitely want to go for an Air Force at some point anyway. However, with two Air Forces, there are definitely scenarios where I maybe uh, later on can go for war, and now that I have two Air Forces, I could maybe take myself the option away of maybe just going for one army with Air Forces and one army without Air Forces. Maybe that is the population and resource that I'm missing at the end. It's definitely possible. So maybe I could also just build a Rifeman with that leaving myself open for modern army entrenchments and positional army. But the mechanized army would then definitely get quite a bit weaker. But I still have the Napoleonic army as well. So... Maybe I shouldn't commit to the Air Forces, but ideally, of course, maybe I can get two tactics with Air Force going at some point, and uh, then maybe it's uh, no, it's fine to have this Air Force, but it could potentially be a problematic at some point to no, to have already committed to the second Air Force. But of course, the Rifleman would also be a commitment, and if I draw the mechanized army tactic now, I might be very happy to not have committed to a Rifleman. So it just depends a bit on how the rest of the game is going and what tactic I actually draw at the end. Then I went for the space flight because for now it's not certain if I will be able to go for a big war. I have the Napoleonic army for certain, but maybe that one won't be big enough to really threat my opponents. And I also wanted to have a wonder that I want, can finish at the end. I had a space flight with me having very decent science production and also the scientific operation pack will hopefully be quite nice. Um, I might be able to at least score in the high 20s uh, with the space flight at the end. And so I wanted to have that available. And then I, at the end, will go for the civil service that allows me to invest my science into something using the scientific operation pact. Having more civil actions can be quite nice, maybe for the future turns. And also the blue tokens are quite nice to have. I could have also just increased my population two times. That also could have been fine. But only increasing my population once doesn't get me out of corruption. And so I can just go and get this going. And the blue tokens then allow me to get out of corruption. I just thought having the seventh civil action could be quite nice. Um, and even with committing to that, maybe I still have a shot at getting a government form going, especially if I maybe uh, if the code was revealed at the ti right time and I get six additional signs from there. And then I increase my population once. Of course, I was really hoping to maybe draw a nice tactic, and I indeed get rewarded here. I have the modern army tactic now available, and now I definitely have the chance to maybe build up for a really big war over the next turns. The impact of culture maybe will be a bit more difficult to pull off, with me having not the most culture reduction at the moment. Caesar Sala goes for tanks, definitely indicating that he might have the mechanized army tactic, but maybe he also doesn't, because he goes for the mobile artillery tactic for now. Takes the air forces, the computers, the oil, and uh, plays the revolutionary idea with the Silk Road bonus. Sadly, he doesn't go for Bill Gates, could be nice with computers, and now that he doesn't go for him, there is the... no. E5 very likely will go for him, and that I think will boost his position quite a lot. So I was hoping that Caesar Seller will go for him, because for him, uh, Bill Gates is definitely a bit costly, could still be nice, maybe could still be nice enough to take him, but also would be a bit costly, and I would a lot rather um, like to see him with Bill Gates than E5. 
who has already computer set up and can take him now more cheaply. Dreitze starts with investing into one movie, has, has had a lot of resources with the economic progress, builds another Hussars tactic, is now 25 strength even after losing Napoleon, takes the patriotism and the urban growth going up to 11 culture reduction with having Chaplin in the movie now. Now it's E5's turn, he seats and a popularization of science is revealed. As you can see, the players have quite a lot of science. Everyone has very these, uh, strong science production. Uh, I sadly am lagging a little bit behind, but this event overall doesn't really change uh, a lot. E5 then develops the military theory and the engineering. He also definitely makes nice use out of the scientific cooperation pact. Probably at the end even a bit more. I didn't count the technologies that we both developed at the end. Um, but uh, no, maybe E5 has one or two technologies more. He then goes for another computer, goes for another computer, takes the Air Force and of course goes for Bill Gates, goes from 8 to 17 resource production and that I think will really give his position a very big boost. Can maybe go for some very big impacts now, can easily uh, manage to build one or even two wonders. So I was a bit afraid that uh, his position is getting quite strong here with getting this very strong Bill Gates going. And also with 17 science production, of course, I have to ask myself the question if I maybe want to cancel the pact, especially as you can see I don't um, play use my politics phase anyway. Could have seated international negotiations just for the two cultures and maybe for the chance to win it later on because my plan is of course to get stronger with having the modern army tactic but at the moment I'm the weakest and there are definitely events that would be very painful to see. For example there could be strength events of course, the cold war could be there, there could be iconoclasm and Maria Theresa is still giving me some very important value. Without the value I can't go for the things that I would like to do. And then uh, could also be uh, something like a Ravages of Time, which would be quite annoying. Um, at least I then would have knowledge about that it is in there. Um, if it is revealed after my turn, I could get surprised by it. Um, but no, I at the end wasn't willing to push just for the two cultures. The impact of culture isn't worth it. So I could have cancelled the pact. But I was hoping that I will get one uh, this turn and the next turn in H3, but E5 will only get his next turn in H3 and hopefully in two turns there will be H4. There's a small chance that maybe the H could actually already end before my next turn. We will talk about this at the end of my turn again. But I was hoping that I will be able to develop a technology this turn with the pact and then maybe also at the next turn and then I was hoping that the pact is still very beneficial for me. And of course, I was very much thinking about how I maybe want to uh, set up for war because the next turn will definitely be the last one, if it will even be happening, but that should be very likely. Um, uh, then it is the last turn to me for me to go for a war. And I can actually set myself up to go for a war with two full modern armies with air forces. I have enough resources for it. Um, it would, uh, it would require me to destroy two things, so definitely a bit costly, but I would have enough resources and stuff for it, and then I could go for a war with going for over 90 strength. So that's definitely very strong. But there's also an issue with that, and that is that after going for that, I won't have enough resources left to finish the space flight, and at this point it's looking like the space flight might at the end be around 30 cultures, so definitely quite big. And um, that would be a big thing to sacrifice. So I wasn't too happy about just going for war and then missing out on a space flight. I thought maybe that's not enough. Of course, I could maybe hit one of my opponents and then with the big war, maybe having a good chance to finish before this one opponent. But just the culture gained from the war might not be enough maybe against the other two opponents. And uh, so I didn't like this too much. So the question was really what to do. I, def I also considered just maybe going for something completely peaceful, just impact preparation, scoring as many cultures as possible. But a bit of a problem is that I have now already committed to the impact of strength, which might still be nice uh, depending on what I go for, but is maybe limiting my options by a little bit. And uh, now, as you can see, I go for the democracy. I want to get a culture. I also thought about the communism. Just because the additional military actions could allow me to be a bit more flexible because if I go for the democracy now and if I want to threaten a war, I need to destroy something already, I need to invest a lot into the military in order to actually being able to pull off the war at the next turn. But the communism has its own problems. First of all, I don't get a culture, which is maybe quite important at this point. It's more costly and also the unhappy face is a bit annoying. So. At the end, the communism just didn't work out very nicely, and I made a decision to go for the democracy, boosting my position immediately. 
And then, uh, now the big question is what to do. Do I want to set myself up for the big war? Um, and then very, very likely missing out on the space flight at the end. Uh, do I um, yeah, just don't want to go for a war at all? Um, no, so I was really uncertain about what to do. And at the end, I also wasn't really certain if I choose the right direction because no, it's just um, it's a bit of a difficult position. And uh, no, at the end, I went for a bit of a compromise. I made the decision to set myself up for war in a bit of a costly way, but I will be able to go for war at the next turn and still be able to finish the space flight at the next turn, but the war will be less big. But the difference in how big it is will be less than the space flight will give me at the end. So that of course sounds very good. So at the end that was the thing that I went for and uh, now it is, looks a bit annoying, but I made a decision to first of all build one rifleman and then uh, instead of to go for two full modern armies with air forces, I made a decision to set myself up for one full army with air force and one outdated army with air force. And uh, no. now it was actually also a bit bad uh, what I told you earlier to have already committed to two air forces. Otherwise there could have been maybe a nicer way to go for something like this with just... Um, going for one full army with air force and one full army without air forces uh, requiring one less population meaning I have to destroy one thing less um, so that is at the end was a bit annoying now and in hindsight with knowing that I have to draw the tactic it could have been better to build a rifleman early on and uh, no, so but I, at the next turn, if I reveal the tactic now, that's important. I can declare war. I have two free military actions, and I can go for cavalryman and uh, then uh, no, um, go for um, quite a bit of strength uh, with Maria. But there's, there are some issues with it. It's a bit of a gamble because I told you that I can finish the space flight at the last turn, but it is actually only true if I get one of the copies of reserves that are still in the deck. I will be able to take one of them for three civil actions. I have enough three civil actions for it. And I was hoping with E5 having that much resource production, with Mim maybe having a lot to do, he maybe wants to go for Wonder, it's very unlikely that he would take a reserves. And also Trades has a lot of stuff, has maybe a lot of things to do, wants to increase his population, maybe build another movie. So, um, for him maybe it's more likely that he will take the reserves, because of course my opponents see that I set myself up for war, and the, uh, the reserves could definitely be useful for Trades. Uh, but I was hoping overall that I maybe have some decent chance to uh, get one copy of those reserves, and if I should get one copy, then at the next turn I would be able to go for war, and finish the space flight at the last turn and if I even get three additional resources out of Maria Teresa then I would even be able to finish the space flight at the last turn and build an additional religion which will be very nice to have some additional happy faces and so uh, that was my plan at the end but uh, now if I don't get the reserves that could definitely backfire it feels a bit weird to already destroy one lab and then only set up for a relatively small war Especially because some of my opponents might definitely be able to be prepare to defend against this war. Caesar Sala can maybe just threaten to go for mechanized army tactic even if he doesn't have it. E5 has tons of resources so he probably will be able to defend himself maybe with just copying the mobile, mobile artillery tactic. And yeah, But there's uh, Dreitz eh? and I really thought about what his strength potential might be and I think for him it will be quite difficult to actually get enough strength to defend this war even with me only going for one outdated army. So um, I was hoping that I will be able to go for a war against him at the next turn, screwing some culture for the war, preparing myself to go for some additional strength for the impact of strength and then hopefully also scoring a big space flight at the end. Then there's also the decision what leader I want to go for. My first instinct was Pierre, then I for a moment thought that Marie Curie could be nice because she gives me two additional strength if I go for the war, just gives me two additional production then also when I elect her at the next turn. For now I will still keep Maria Theresa. Um, so I am gaining uh, two production, two additional strength, making me a bit stronger. 
And for a moment I thought maybe it could be nice to not have the Olympic Games because one problem with going for this war plan is that at the moment I don't have a nice way to use my last politics phase if I go for PR because then there are the Olympic Games ongoing and maybe I don't want to go for an aggression. And with Marie Curie I, uh, there may be no Olympic Games ongoing but actually it's still likely that the Olympic Games are ongoing because if I don't go for PR it's very likely that Cesar Sala will go for PR and he could even just go for some pro sports, three pro sports with the architecture and I think that could be very strong strong for him, so I think maybe it's also important to take Pierre away from him. On the other hand, Marie Curie might also be quite nice for him, but I think Pierre would be stronger for him, and at the end Pierre is also giving me more culture just with the Olympic Games than Marie Curie, and so with that at the end I made a decision to go for Pierre, not electing him yet, I want to keep Maria Theresa, but maybe at the next turn. And then I keep, uh, take a pro sport and a copy of mechanized agriculture because uh, there is a chance that I maybe can develop both of those technologies and a cavalry man to get uh, quite a big space flight going. Maybe there's also a chance to still score a Nobel Prize. With taking those cards, I really had to consider if. Um, uh, there is actually the danger of maybe the age ending before my next turn because that could be quite bad at least with this line with going for only warriors I have the chance to just finish the space flight at the next turn um, but if I maybe could develop two techs and then I can't develop any technology it would be a bit annoying um, so I definitely would not like to see the age end and if all players cooperate, they could probably make it that the age will end, but especially trades in e5, maybe just also want to do some nice, actually nice stuff, and e5 has quite a full hand, so while there is maybe a very small chance that the age will end, I thought it's very unlikely, and with that well, I was willing to take both of those cards, otherwise I could have maybe taken the efficient upgrade or maybe played the reserves for resources already. I didn't want to increase my population because then I would go into consumption one turn earlier and now with I have just enough food to increase my population two times at the next turn. Sadly to build two cavalry men I will also need to destroy one of those things that I have um, yeah, at the moment and probably a scientific method or maybe a selective breeding. Yeah, so that was my decision for the turn at the end. I'm definitely not certain about all of um, this, if it is the right way to go. Maybe I should go for a big war, maybe I shouldn't go for war at all, but I thought it could be nice to be a bit threatening, forcing maybe my opponents to react, and ideally if everything goes right. And I also thought that maybe things have to go right for me, because uh, E5 and also the other players can definitely set up for very strong economies, and I might be lagging a bit behind in impacts. And so maybe things have to go right for me, and if I get a copy of reserves at the next turn, I can get a card from the war and split a space flight at the last turn. I was hoping to maybe be very lucky, and now with this one draw get a nice impact, but sadly just another armed intervention, and now there might indeed be the problem for me that I might not have a nice way to spend my last uh, politics action at my last turn. Caesar Sala seeds, there is the Cold War revealed, and I'm one of the two strongest. I was happy to see that I am able to win this because that um, makes it now a lot more likely that I um, can get maybe a Nobel Prize going and also an additional technology for the space flight. Now that I've taken PR away, Cesar Sala will go for Marie Curie, goes for the oil, goes for the computer scoring a Nobel Prize, goes for two upgrades, increasing his culture production with Marie Curie, also his science production as the railroad gets a lot of... Uh, a big boost for his resource production, so he might now be very nicely prepared for some impacts and also his course Nobel Prize, some decent culture production. But he doesn't have any wonder yet, maybe he has to hope to maybe get a United Nations, which could still be a wonder uh, that he might get. I was hoping that maybe he could go for the Red Cross, because the Red Cross at this point is looking very, very juicy for Treitze, so um, yeah. And he indeed will also go for it, but maybe my military pressure is actually doing something now because he will, could have potentially just finished it and gotten all the culture for it, but instead he won't finish it and instead um, makes the decision that he has to use his military actions. He doesn't have that many, there's one copy of military theory left, but he definitely doesn't know whether he will get it or not. And so he starts using some military actions, gets stronger, going up to 41 strength, maybe otherwise he also would have been in danger of an aggression. Those two stages of the Red Cross at least knows, I mean, E5 could play the reserves for food and maybe build a step, so there's a chance that all of his opponents will now just build a step. Um, yeah, so it's uh, definitely, um, could have been very strong, but he sees that I have uh, committed something to go for this war and with that is definitely rightly doing so and preparing for it. E5 seats and event revealed 
is the Ravages of Time, and that is an event that definitely will mess with my plans. Um, because I have to destroy the Stonehenge with the, together with the St. Peter's Basilica, that one is actually giving me two happy faces. So I was very unhappy to see this event revealed, and now I have really to think about what I actually want to do. If I still want to, if I still can actually um, execute my plan, if I still want to execute my plan, or if it is now too costly. So no, not an event that I really like to see at this point. E5 uses the Oceanliner service, we'll just go for the Manhattan Project, can easily finish it. Tag also goes for the communism and then even builds another computer, has now a lot of labs and scores the Manhattan Project, finishes it for 22 culture and with that also gains some additional strength and in the next turn he can just develop the air forces and the rockets and then with 28 resources he can build 4 units, copy a mobile artillery tactic and should have a very decent amount of strength, definitely enough to defend. Also Caesar Sala, just with the potential of him having mechanized army tactic, is also an opponent that I can't go for the war, but as said, Dreitze could, with the reserves, go for two more tanks, has the chance to get the military theory, and if he should get the military theory, he can go up to plus 20 strength to 61, but it would not be enough to win the war. If I go for two cavalrymen, I get plus 6 from the units, then plus 26 and plus 14 from the two tactics, so plus 46, and I would be at 75 with that. So I would be able to win a war, even with a bit of a lead still, even though having gone only for this outdated army against Dreitze, and it is still possible for me to pull this war off, and as you can see, there is actually also a copy of reserves available. So of course, I when I saw this turn, immediately tried out how does it look like when I go for war, um, is it very costly because I have to resolve now the religious of time, I will lose two happy faces and that of course then looks very unpleasant. But I'm one of the two weakest and I told you too that if I'm one of the two weakest and gain three resources out of my retreaser, then if I should get the reserves I can actually finish the space flight at the next turn and build a religion and of course I can also build a religion this turn actually already. So um, I could uh, at least build a religion to gain go back to three happy faces but in order to um, in order to pull off this war I would now in, in, um, instead of only needing to destroy one thing I would need to destroy two things and that would probably very likely be one farm and one lab and then I would be able to go for this war and still have at least this one religion and finish the space flight at the end for 30 points. So now that I could do, and as said, Dreitze, if he gets the military theory, is at 61, but he might also not get the military theory, and the war could get even bigger. So I would be able to steal something like 19 culture from him. But destroying two things is definitely quite costly for some impacts, and the question is, what are the alternatives? Because also one thing uh, is that if I go for the war, I will increase my population two times normally, and I won't find the time to build one step of the uh, the Red Cross. Meaning I will maybe steal some cards from trades, I have maybe also a swing against them, maybe I think against trades it definitely might be worth it to go for this war, because it's a nice swing against him. But on the other hand, I also miss out on a step of the Red Cross, Trades will then get the step instead, so I miss out on sixth culture, Trades then misses out, I get six additional culture if I don't build the step, so that makes the war already a bit less big, and the thing is just if I destroy that much, it might really hurt a lot for the impacts. Impact of balance might very likely be in there, especially trades has a very very nice balance, impact of agriculture might very ni likely be in there, impact of harmony could definitely be in there, and destroying this lab might be quite bad, especially with going for some other lines, I might go for more, more urban buildings and make the impact of harmony at least a bit better. And the thing is, if I go for the Y, I also don't draw any cards. And if I go for an alternative turn, which I will now, then um, I will get three additional draws and there's the chance that maybe I get an impact. And if I should get an impact at the end, then I think not going for the war is definitely the right decision. If I don't get any impact, then maybe the war could still be worth it. It depends on the impacts in there. Um, no. But the best solution probably would be, because if I go for the war, I know that I have no additional impact, the best solution would be to go for a peaceful line, uh, the best outcome may be at a peaceful line, and then uh, getting a very nice impact that I can play into the deck. Of course, maybe I could also go for the war and then hope that my opponents have seeded all the nice impacts for me, but I uh, don't know. So, 
It was a close decision for me, but at the end I just thought I'm just too badly prepared for the impacts with going for this war. It's not that big of a war, especially against Caesar Sala and E5, I just think going for a peaceful line is better here. Against Raids, then maybe it could be better, but then he also would get an additional step from the Red Cross. And with that, I at the end didn't go for the war and just skipped my politics phase. The problem is, of course, I need to find a turn that is working very nicely for me, because there is still the impact of strength coming, so I still need to go for a bit of additional strength. And now, first of all, I build one step of the Red Cross, that one is one of the benefits of not going for this war. At the moment I have some big heavy phase issues, I have Pierre and the Bro Sports in hand, and now I actually made a decision to make use of that. After increasing my population and getting the value out of Maria, I will elect Pierre, develop the Bro Sports, build one Bro Sport, my first instinct was to use the resource from a reset to just upgrade this warrior, but then I am just too weak, I would miss out an impact of strength and that it's not, that's not an option. And so I went for the cavalry man and I can actually just disband a warrior, build a cavalry man, I will still get my three draws in, and it puts me at 61 strength, hopefully enough to still win the impact of strength. And without a war, maybe my opponents are not really that intense bias to... Uh, go for a big strength investment, and so I was hoping that, like this, I will still be able to win the impact of strength, I score a Nobel Prize, now we'll get a build, uh, the Pierre Olympic Games at the next turn, and with taking this copy of reserves, I will be able to finish the space flight at the next turn for 30 points, and yeah, with that, I maybe with probably getting the biggest wonder, I might have the chance to go into the final impacts with the lead, and uh, yeah, also have the chance to draw a nice... Um, impact now and I'm not as badly prepared for the impacts as when I would have gone for the war. Then with my last civil action I consider taking a revolutionary idea because it would be very nice to actually get two technologies at the next turn that would not only mean three additional points for the space flight but also four additional points for the um, Nobel Prize, but the problem is I just don't have enough civil actions to pull it off. I need two civil actions to play the reserves, I need four civil actions to finish the space flight, I need one civil action to um, develop the mechanized agriculture, and then I think I don't have enough civil actions left, or maybe I do, maybe I actually do, or maybe I forgot about something that I also wanted to do, and I also need to play the revolutionary idea, so yeah, I don't have enough, also it's even with the revolutionary idea not that likely that there is even a technology available that I can invest into, so um, at the end I didn't want for a revolution already, instead just a patriotism, because I will have the free civil action to play this patriotism, and then I can just get a bit more strength going, making it a bit more, light, bit more likely that I can actually win the impact of strength, and if there's an impact of competition, then I would also score better in that impact. So that uh, is my second last turn now. Of course, I was very happy, uh, very interested to see what cards I might draw. And sadly, as you can see, I get another war, but no impact, meaning I won't be able to score a seed impact. And with not having gotten an impact, it could be that maybe it could have been better to go for the war, but maybe even with not getting an impact, um, this line could potentially still be better depending on what impacts are in there. Because there are just a lot of impacts that are worse when I go for this war. Impact of happiness, impact of harmony, impact of balance, impact of agriculture, um, impact of architecture. So, uh, no. Um, that's just uh, a lot of culture that I could potentially miss out on. Caesar Salah seeds at my turn, I also considered seeding the international negotiations. Because I just feel that with their strong economies and their potentially strong impacts coming, I um, need a bit of risk. I need to take a bit of risk in order to uh, maybe win this game or um, finish in a nice position. And the two culture from the international negotiations could be nice, and not only the two culture, of course, the event would now be immediately on top, meaning that uh, no, I could then also win the, win the international negotiations, and maybe the additional stuff could potentially help me in any way, or in some way. So I thought about it, but there are still would have been a lot of strength events that I could get hit by. There are actually not that many events left. Some of them were strength events. The Iconoclast would still be very bad because I need the additional resource from Maria Teresa to build this cavalry man in order to be prepared for the impact of strength. And at the end I wasn't brave enough. Maybe I should have been brave enough because there is actually no event on top that would punish me. It's just the autonomous territory. And that is actually a card that is maybe coming 
uh, this may be a nice actually for me because I have the navigation and I'm actually able to win this territory for just a warrior, not really losing a lot of strength, so still being at 60 strength and I can now take 7 culture going up to 94 and with that having a bit more of a culture lead. Caesar Sala builds also one stage of the Red Cross, develops two technologies, scores another Nobel Prize, builds one Bro Sports, uh, builds one Air Force, takes the revolutionary idea, and in the next turn maybe has even the potential to go for another Nobel Prize if there's uh, technology available for him. Also he gets stronger, but luckily not as strong as that he would overtake me in strength, and it's not looking like he has a copy of Mechanized Army, especially now that I have drawn one of those two copies. Dreitze finishes the Red Cross, has built three stages of it, also upgrades uh, some more knights to tanks, going up to 49 strength, takes the military theory, develops it with that he should be relatively safe from aggression, only needs one defense card, and then he also builds one more movie, going up to 17 culture reduction. <coughs> Then e5 offers the international tourism to Caesar Sala. Of course, not great to see this pack accepted between my opponents, especially because they actually have some wonders. e5 will get 6 and Caesar Sala 4 additional culture out of this pack. But with their strong economies, uh, e5 going for this pack at least means that he doesn't see an impact. Uh, so it has maybe also something positive to it. He will use the ocean liner service and then builds an additional team spots, takes the United Nations, can easily go for a second um, H3 wonder, develops the rockets and then builds some rockets, doesn't maybe want to be in danger of getting hit by an aggression, copies to the mobile artillery tactic and with, th with that is at 52 strength and then also takes the multimedia. I didn't get an impact with my last draw, but I have drawn this peace treaty, which at least allows me to get one additional culture shared with one other opponent. Now the question was, which other opponent do I want to share this peace treaty with? And when we take a look at how much culture my opponents have, I think it's actually quite a close position here. I think all of the opponents still have uh, some potential here to win this game. Caesar Salah has quite a strong economy, has quite some impacts that could be very strong, is also the opponent that is prepared the best for the impact of strength at the moment. But at the moment it looks like he doesn't get a wonder, he could go for the Hollywood but only for 6 culture, so that's not really a lot. Um, so he has probably the lowest culture going into the final impacts. Both him and Reitze have the downside that they won't get an H3 wonder, Reitze, but Reitze has more culture. Um, and with that, maybe a bit of a better position here. It has definitely also some strong impacts, like impact of balance. Some impacts are better for Caesar Sala, um, but Reyes definitely has also some decent ones. I think he didn't see that many, so Caesar Sala has seeded one more impact. And then we have E5, and E5 will be able to finish the United Nations, will get a very big Bill Gates bonus, and of course is also very nicely prepared for some impacts, not that nice for impact of balance at the moment, but impact of science, he is the best at the moment, impact of progress could be nice for him, <coughs> impact of wonders, impact of colonies, so um, yeah, he uh, might get into the final impacts, maybe even with the most culture, when he we also take the Bill Gates bonus into account. And at the end, I just thought Caesar Sala will probably have the lowest culture going into the final impact. He has some strong impacts, but Reitze has some strong ones as well, E5 as well. It's of course also the question, do I want to play for first place, or do I want to try to not be in the last place, but I still ha definitely can have some hope in this position, because uh, I will now get a 30 culture space flight, 8 points from the Olympic Games, and I will go into the final impacts with the lead, and I have the impact of strength, where I hopefully will score some nice points. So. I um, definitely wanted to play for the win here, and with that I offered it to Caesar Sala, but it's not clear. There's definitely a way how Caesar Sala can finish with more culture than traits, depending on the impacts. Um, I didn't do any big calculations, I didn't want to do this just for this peace treaty. <laughs> um, that I, yeah, wasn't worth the effort um, for me, and for my turn it wasn't uh, that relevant, so at the end um, I just offered it to Caesar Sala. I didn't want to offer it to e5 um, because um, no, he has low culture reduction and while I discarded impact of culture earlier on, the deck was actually reshuffled at some point. We can see it here. Um, so there is a chance that the impact of culture is actually could still be seeded into the deck. And even if it isn't in the deck, 
it might potentially impact E5's turn, and now when I have one additional cash production, it just gets a bit more difficult for him uh, to overtake me. Um, of course, building cultural production is maybe something that he wants to do anyway, but maybe he has some impacts that he wants to prepare for, and maybe there's a chance that it will a little bit limit its options because he wants to overtake me in culture, and that was why I really didn't want to offer this pack to him. And at the end, I offered it to Cesar Sala, of course, playing the Olympic Games with Pierre. And then I will take the rockets. First I just developed a mechanized agriculture and then I have one free civil actions after doing everything at the end. And I took the rockets away because it takes the option away from Caesar Sala to go for Nobel Prize. It also gives him dem democracy for one civil action cheaper. Maybe something that he wants to go for anyway, but the Nobel Prize gives one culture more and does at least a chance that the impact of technology is in the deck. So not was not certain if it's worth it, but then I discovered that the rockets are actually also offering one nice benefit for me. And so at the end, I took the rockets, play both of the reserves, finished the space flight for 30 points, increased my population. And be before, when I just developed a mechanized agriculture, I thought I would play the patriotism, build one unit, for example, a rifleman for t three additional strength. But of course, it is a lot better to just play the patriotism and go for two upgrades. Both of those things would give me plus two for an impact of competition, but just going for those upgrades gives me four strength instead of only three. And who knows, that could even be relevant because Caesar Sala, if he just builds an air force or a tank, has 10 plus 10 strength. And now that would just not be enough to overtake me. I would win the tiebreaker at the end for the impact of strength. And so I think it's quite nice to go for those rockets. And I will be at 142 culture after my turn and at least have a bit of a lead at the moment. And there's also the impact of strength coming, so there is definitely some hope for me. But there are definitely also some impacts where I'm really not that great in impact of harmony. I don't have the biggest architecture. And sadly, I didn't draw any of the strong impacts for me, like government, progress, potentially colonies, even though that would be even better for E5. But there are also not that many colony, uh, that many impacts. I am better than my opponents, and at least I have the impact of strength in there. Now it is um, the Caesar's turn, and he opens the impact of happiness, an impact that I was not too unhappy to see. It's relatively similar, plus two for Caesar's but I even gained plus two against E5, so definitely not one of the bad impacts for me. Caesar's then increases population, builds the library, plays the revolutionary idea, goes for the democracy, uh, upgrades one mine, which could indicate that an impact of industries in there, and then play, uh, goes for the military build up and the reserves. Trade said his turn also seeds. The next impact revealed is actually the impact of strength already, giving me plus 15, Caesar Sala plus 10, Trade plus 0, and E5 plus 5. Trade will go for the one technology that is left in the row, just increases population a bunch of times, builds a religion, a printing press, and interestingly, another knight. And now it's E5's turn, he will also see it. The impact of variety is revealed, but again, an another impact that is not that bad for me. I gain plus 18, Caesar Sala as well, and Trades and E5 both gain plus 16. So, so far I was very happy to see what impacts are revealed. And then E5 develops the multimedia, the Air Force has got Nobel Prize, increases population, builds the multimedia, upgrades one, um, builds an H2 um, farm, so that he is better prepared for the impact of balance in agriculture. Finishes the United Nations for 20 points, and the impact that he will evaluate is the impact of progress, and again an impact where that I was actually happy to see, because it gives me plus 6 against Caesar Sala, plus 8 against Treize, and the same as E5, so so far I was very happy about the impacts, and with that, of course, it's maybe not too bad that I didn't draw the impacts for myself, because some of them I could have maybe just pushed, I would have maybe just pushed myself, so of course I didn't get a culture for seeding, but at least the one culture for the peace treaty. So, so far I was uh, very uh, pleasantly surprised by the impacts that were revealed, but there uh, will of course be six more impacts coming. And now we can take a look at the final, uh, um, at the culture before the final impacts, and at the moment I definitely have a bit of a lead, 40 culture before Caesar Sala, 37 before Treize, E5, um, I have 39 before E5, but of course he has also quite a nice Bill Gates bonus. And now we will take a look at the final impacts. I don't have knowledge about any of the impacts. The first one is the impact of industry. That's not too bad. Oh, it's quite good for Caesar Sala, so bad against him, but not too bad against the other opponents. Caesar Sala overtakes now Treize and E5. 
Then the next one is the Impact of Harmony, that's definitely not a nice one for me. I only gain plus 12, but my opponents all gain plus 20, so all of them catch up. And now my lead is definitely also already not that strong any longer, but I still have a more than a 20 points lead. So um, no, um, there is still a bit of a buffer. And the next Impact is actually again one that is quite decent for me, um, probably seated by e5, both we gain both plus 26. With that e5 will overtake Trace now and... Uh, but Caesar Sala and Tracy only gain plus 19 out of it. Now there are three impacts left and I'm still in the lead. The next next impact is the impact of science. That is a good one for Caesar Sala and especially for E5. Not that great, great for uh, Treize, who is falling a little bit behind, but is definitely still in reach. And now E5 and Caesar Sala again definitely have come closer. The second last impact is the impact of Kalsha, so that one is actually in there, so that means that it was actually reshuffled and then just drawn by Caesar Sala, who now gains plus 15 Kalsha against me, is now only 3 Kalsha behind me, E5 is 11 behind me, but he will get a big Bill Gates bonus and Reitze is at this point 18 Kalsha behind me, now there's one impact left and the uh, position is still very very close. Now you can see if I will be able to keep my lead or if one of my opponents or maybe even multiple of my opponents will be able to overtake me. And the last impact is the impact of technology plus 20 for me, which is strong, but even plus 28 for Caesar Sala, plus 28 for E5 and then a plus 20 for Treize, meaning that Caesar Sala managed to overtake me. So the last impact has been evaluated, but the game is not over yet because now there will be the Bill Gates bonus. And with that, E5 will actually move from third to first position and at the end is able to win this game with 280 points, uh, four culture before Caesar Sala and nine culture before me. And no, I at the end sadly only finish at the third position, only before Treize. And uh, yeah, with that, uh, well, no, I have not the greatest start into the stage of the tournament, but definitely a very exciting game, a very exciting finish. Um, sadly not, of course, with the ideal outcome for me. I am definitely not certain if I played um, the end of the game in the right way, setting up for a war, then not going for this war, destroying something for this only, only to build um, some warriors. That definitely didn't really feel ideal. But on the other hand, I also still think that threatening some amount of strength um, with the war also did something, especially for Treize, who mm, no, didn't just finish the Red Cross, instead had to build some tanks. So I think the pressure it still did something, even though I didn't go for a war at the end. And then the Ravages of Time, of course, made it even a bit more costly for me to go for this war. Otherwise, I maybe would have gone for it, but who knows, maybe even then it could have been a better decision to not go for the war. Maybe it would could even be the better decision to have gone for the war, but I think I just would have been punished by some impacts probably. But maybe we can take a look at the uh, impacts that were. Uh, actually, we don't see them here, so there was the impact of harmony, which would have been worse. I think there was also the impact of happiness, and um, yeah, so there were definitely some of the impacts that uh, were better for me now with not having gone for the war. No, and uh, I. My opponents just managed up to manage to build up some very nice economies. I think Caesar Sala had a very strong precision already very early with the pyramids, the Silk Road, being nicely able to make use out of Gutenberg, getting this Conmon. I think he had a very nice precision, E5. Um, then also as the late age 2, early age 3 managed to build up a very nice position, got his early computers and then of course with Bill Gates had a lot of production at the end, so both of them managed to you know, just build a very strong economy, uh, very well played by them and then of course in 4 player games there will be a lot of impacts evaluated and then it will be beneficial to just have very balanced, uh, very economically strong civilizations and if you only have uh, somewhat decent economy, because my economy is not bad, but also really not extraordinary, and with that you will just get punished in four player games very often and lose a lot of points. I went into the final impacts with uh, 40 Kalsch lead before Caesar Sala, but he managed to overcome that lead and finish before me at the end, so yeah, and of course not the ideal ending, but definitely an exciting game, and there are still seven games to come where I can maybe uh, no, get some better results and hopefully um, at the end maybe achieve to win this group, but that definitely won't be an easy task, especially now that I've only finished at the third position in this first game. 
And after the first game is finished, we will take a look at the standings. And at the stand standings, we will also include one of the ga other games that is already finished from me that I won't show in a video. I will put a replay code to this game into the description of this video. So if you want to take a look at this game without knowing the outcome, you have to pause the video now. Because now we will take a look at the standings and also take a look at how the second game of the stage has finished for me. And as you can see, there actually have uh, already been some games finished. We will go from the bottom to the top. And we can see that E5 in a two-player game managed to win against Cesar Sala, who resigned in this game. But Cesar Sala then managed to win in a two-player game against Reize. The three-player game between all of my opponents also has finished already. As you can see, the most of those games have finished very shortly after each other. And in this three-player game, E5 managed to win before Cesar, Sala and Reize. Now we have the four-player game that we just saw, where E5 also managed to win before Cesar, Sala, me and Reize. And then there was the one game that um, we won't take a look at with the video, where I managed to beat Cesar, Sala in a two-player game, who resigned at the end of H3. And then there was another two-player game between E5 and Reize, and there E5 managed to win again. So as you can see, E5 has had a very strong start in the tournament, and in the standings that uh, uh, will look like this. E5 is sitting on the top, has finished half of his games, and has won all of them. So he has a really strong start into the stage, and with that it will of course be quite challenging to, uh, to win this group, because I have to catch up a lot of points, and uh, it will be really important now for me to finish before e5 in the other games, because otherwise it uh, will be very, very, very difficult to catch up to him. Um, he is at 19 points after four games finished. The second position is Cesar Sala with nine points, but he has already five games finished. So for him, winning the group is still possible, but um, he probably needs to win all of his three remaining games. I am at five points, but I also have only two games finished. I'm a bit busy in real life at the moment, so I sadly can't play very quickly. And also sadly, that means that I probably won't be able to cover a lot of games of the stage, maybe only three or four is realistic. Um, yeah, but I'm at the moment at two games finished with five points. So yeah, for me there are still a lot of games to come and with that of course there is still um, a lot of hope left to win this group. But it will be very important to finish before E5 because if E5 finishes one or two times more, um, two or more games, one or two more games before me, then uh, yeah, it, um, probably he has already that much of a lead that it will be impossible for me to catch up to him. So uh, yeah, a very strong start by him. Not an ideal start for Treitze, who has uh, lost his games so far, but he has still three games to come. The good thing for him is, is that there is no player eliminated, so he will be able to continue in the next stage, even with being in the fourth position. And of course, with three games left, he also still has the chance to catch up to one or two players. Yeah, and with that uh, we have uh, finished uh, the first video of the stage. I hope it, hope it was an interesting game for you. Definitely a very exciting finish. And uh, yeah, it will be interesting to see how the stage continues because E5 definitely yeah, had, had, had a very strong start and will be very difficult to catch up from now. And then uh, thanks for watching and see you in the next video.